Hey guys, tonight's news is really, really big. I wish I could take credit for the whole thing, but I can't. Um, it comes from two awesome internet detectives on two different groups on Facebook. Insert cheap plugs here. One of them is my group, which is Uncensored. Um, Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey when police are corrupt, and it comes from Lynn Johnson. And the other inter awesome internet detective is um, Donna Barton from Making a Murder, a Facebook group. Now, check this out. Okay, first I'm going to start with Lynn's. And what Lynn discovered is, and I had not heard this before tonight, that Barb was actually in jail sitting right next to um, Jody on, guess what date? November 5th. What date did they find the car? November 5th. Wow. Talk about fucked up. Now, the reason why this is even like super important is because on Barb's record, and it was like a stupid pot thing, but on Barb's record, it states that it didn't happen. The filing date was December 1st. Why in the world would the police lie and say it was December 1st? Now you could say to me, well, how did I possibly find out if it wasn't filed till December 1st? Check this out. The phone records, you know those phone records, the detailed phone records? And again, this is going to be all connected on the website, which um, it's not finished yet. It'll be ready by Saturday, but the domain name will be guiltyinjustice.com. So here's the call log. I'm going to try to put it for November 5th, somewhere up here. And it shows that Barb was sitting in jail. They didn't know what to do, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if you could see it. I don't want to waste too much time holding it up. But if you didn't see it, it'll be on the website by Saturday, promise. So it's really interesting, though, because at 7.30 is where they say that she was out, um, that, you know, they didn't know what to do with her, so they were going to let her out. Folks, that was 7.30 p.m. They logged the the car being found at 4 p.m. Personally, I think it was done in early morning because that looked like a sunrise, not a sunset. But, I mean, I'm not a meteorologist, just a guess. So, if all their records are correct, which we already know they're not, or they would have made the filing for November 5th, but they were trying to cover up the fact that she was in jail November 5th. Why? What are they hiding that they could file this until December 1st? Her arrest record looks like it's December 1st. Well, folks, it says right here on November 5th, she was sitting right next to Jody. Wow, that's a big one. Okay, but speaking of Barb's house, let's go one step further. Now, we all saw and just loved Scott Tadich for sitting there when his stepson or, you know, mom, uh, girlfriend's, a 16 year old son or he was 18 at the time I think he was actually convicted who's read a verdict of guilty of all charges and Mr. Scott Tadish who by that time was his stepfather um, sat there laughing and had a big smile on his face which honestly probably pissed me off more than Kratz does it was disgusting I don't know if I was with a man that was smiling when my special ed 18 year old was convicted of these horrible, heinous acts, uh, I think I would have slapped him across the fucking head really hard with a bat or a two by four, either or. And I probably would have done it right in the courtroom. So let's get into why he was so happy though, because we all know he was happy and he was certainly happy as a pig in shit when uh, uh, Avery got convicted too. What did he say? And I quote, this is going to be the best day of my fucking life. Why, you sorry son of a bitch, because you just got away with murder, you fucking asshole? Okay, so let me move on before I get into a round of cursing. Um, on the stand, both Scott and Bobby said they had alibis for each other. Scott said that he saw Bobby on the 31st of October at just before around 3 p.m. on Highway 147. Scott was going west, Bobby was going east. Now, Scott said he was going to Kiwani. He lived in a trailer on 147. It was uh, 12764 State Highway 147 North Mishicot, Wisconsin. 
area code 54228. Good work, Donna. Um, and it's about two miles away from the Avery's. Scott said that when he passed Bobby, he was only doing about 25 miles an hour and uh, tops. Scott said Bobby was slowing down to turn into Scott's driveway as Scott was driving up 147. Okay. The problem with this scenario, it's not fucking possible. Scott would have had to been driving from one point farther east than his house in order for him to be able to pass Bobby as Bobby was turning into his place. But this is just the beginning of Scott's real problems because Kiwani is northeast of Scott's house, not west. There is literally no way to get to Kiwani by going west. If Scott really were going to Kiwani, he had one of two choices. He would have had to um, turn out of his driveway heading east on 147 for approximately one mile then either turned left on Highway 8 Country Trunk and headed north or took East County Road west for approximately two miles and then turned left north on 42 to Kiwani, which is about eight miles north. There is no scenario at all on a map that Scott would have passed Bobby if Scott was going to Kiwani. Now, there is no possible way that Scott was traveling west if he were headed to Kiwani. So to make matters worse, if it could possibly even get worse, Blaine said that Bobby was sleeping when Blaine got home from school at 345 and that Bobby just woke up when Blaine arrived. There is proof right there that Scott and Bobby did not have each other as an alibi. It also says to me that Scott scared the daylights out of whoever is involved and everybody kept their mouth shut because they were afraid of Scott. That's what it says to me. This is my own opinion. I'm not blaming Scott in a literal sense. Okay, I am, but I can't prove it yet. So I don't want to get sued for slander. Um, but in my personal opinion, based on my freedom of speech, I believe Scott Taddock is the killer. I don't know who else is involved, but I do believe in my heart of hearts that Scott Tadich is the one that murdered her. So with that said, um, I'm going to let all of that sink in. And again, both of these will be on the website, which is going to be www.guiltyinjustice.com. And I hope you guys have a fantastic night. I will see you tomorrow. And don't forget, I got to give one more cheap plug, Uncensored. Uh, Stephen Avery, Brendan Dassey, when police are corrupt, um, making a murderer, making a murderer theories and discussions, um, and also justice for Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey. And guys, have a great night. Peace out.